Now, your forecast first, sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. All right, good evening to you. A very calm night out there, but it is chilly if you've been out at all. Skies are generally clear, and that's why that temperature is now down to 25 in Champaign. But we've got a little bit of a wind, and that's making it feel like 13 degrees. That is the actual wind chill in Champaign, 18 in Springfield. Bus stop forecast for the kids tomorrow. A lot of cloud cover and a lot of wind is expected. 28 on the way to school and 50 on the way home. But we're talking about winds gusting to 45 miles per hour coming up tomorrow. And then attention turns to a lot of rain. Flash or flood watches in effect. We've got to talk about just how much rain we are going to see when it all begins. Coming up, WCIA 3 News starts right now. Now on WCIA 3 Part News. Part of one interstate is shut down after a crash. I'll have the latest on what happened. It probably is uh, one of the most disturbing and shocking set of facts that I have experienced as a member of the legislature. It's a scandal that rocked the state capitol this week. What lawmakers are saying after accusations of rape and a cover-up. We all know the, the support with the family, friends, and, and complete strangers uh, is amazing. And it was all for a boy diagnosed with brain cancer. How they greeted him when he arrived home from the hospital. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. And I'm Jessica Coons. First responders are currently on the scene of a crash that crushed a vehicle and shut down an interstate. It happened in Urbana tonight between the Cunningham and Lincoln Avenue exits on I-74 westbound. WCIA3's Emily Braun is live near the scene tonight. Emily, what else can you tell us? Jessica, we know this has been a serious crash. This is as close as we can get to showing you what happened. As you mentioned, there is a crushed car behind me, and there are car parts spread out all across the grassy area. When we were navigating all of this, we saw a vehicle from the coroner's office pass through, so I reached out to the coroner to ask for more information, and I am still waiting to hear back. But if you are getting on from the university entrance tonight, police are leading you right off. If you're trying to get on from Cunningham going westbound, the ramp is blocked because police have shut down this interstate for several miles starting at that university entrance. Crews got here around 8.30 this evening, and they will not be clearing anytime soon. In the meantime, they're asking you to avoid the area for at least the next several hours. So you can see this is still a very active scene and details are limited at this time. But as soon as we have more information from state police, we will share that with you on WCIA.com. For now, live in Urbana, Emily Braun, WCIA 3, your local news leader. All right, let us know if you hear anything else. Emily, thank you. Now to tonight's other top story. State lawmakers are calling for a criminal investigation into a rape cover-up. He kept his mouth shut about a champagne rape. Where does that happen? What society allows that to happen? A newly uncovered email appears to show House Speaker Michael Madigan's close friend knew about a rape and protected a state worker who kept it under wraps. Madigan issued a statement and denied having any knowledge about it. This comes as his confidant, Mike McLean, is the target of an FBI investigation. Our Capitol Bureau Chief Mark Maxwell is live in our Capitol Bureau tonight with more on this developing story. Mark, what else do we know? Jessica, WBEZ was first to break this news last night. We have since obtained a copy of that damning email from Speaker Madigan's close friend to former Governor Pat Quinn's chief of staff in 2012. It spells out apparent knowledge of a rape in Champaign and a conspiracy to sweep that explosive and damaging information under the rug. I read this last night, and it probably is uh, one of the most disturbing and shocking set of facts that I have experienced as a member of the legislature. House Republican leader Jim Durkin expressed shock and outrage at this email written July 31st, 2012 from Mike McLean to former Governor Pat Quinn's chief of staff Jerry Sturmer and top aide Gary Hannig. McLean urged them to protect a state worker, writing, please do not let them fire him. He has kept his mouth shut on Jones' ghost workers, the rape in Champaign, and other items. He is loyal to the administration. It is beyond breathtaking that Democrats uh, people who, Mr. McLean, who's extremely tied in with the operations of state government, back even in 2012, rewarded a state employee for keeping his mouth shut on a ghost payrolling uh, issue 
which is a felony, whether it's in state courts or federal courts, and even worse, he kept his mouth shut about a champagne rape. House Democrats chimed in on Twitter, Ann Williams calling the cover-up stunning and incredibly disturbing. Will Gazzardi called a, quote, cult of loyalty reprehensible and twisted. Kelly Cassidy said McLean could be liable for damages and described him as the most powerful lobbyist in the state who remains incredibly close to Speaker Madigan. In a statement, Speaker Madigan said, these are extremely serious and troubling allegations. I had no knowledge of the incident referenced in the story and only learned of this today. I encourage those with any information to come forward. There needs to be accountability for what happened. Tonight, the first signs of accountability are starting to show. The person, the former state worker named in that email, or referenced in that email, rather, saw his state contract yanked pending review. Governor Pritzker's office responding tonight, saying they've uh, notified the appropriate investigative authorities. We understand that to me in the office of the inspector, uh, executive inspector general who can probe further to find out what other uh, evidence might exist before handing that over to uh, state's attorney's office, potentially uh, Julia Reitz's office in Champaign County. Her office says they have not yet been notified of anything, but that process could soon become underway. Of course, she would need more than a vague insinuation from an eight-year-old email to file any criminal charges. Of course, if you, uh, anyone in our audience, knows anything about that rape in Champaign referenced in 2012, please let us know. Jessica. All right, Mark Maxwell reporting in Springfield tonight. Mark, thank you. In other news, Danville police say a teenager was shot in the leg last night. The 18-year-old victim says it happened near Holiday Drive and Bowman Avenue. He told officers shots were fired from a white vehicle. No word on a suspect yet. If you know anything about what happened, give Crime Stoppers a call. Tonight, law enforcement leaders from Champaign and Urbana discussed some of the community's biggest problems from last year. These talks at the Champaign County Community Coalition meetings happen every month, but with a new year comes new ways to tackle things like gun violence and officer recruiting. WCI Three's Emily Braun has more. Community leaders packed this room and listened as Champaign County law enforcement heads named the biggest problems they're facing. Gun violence, officer turnover, and a lack of cooperation from victims and witnesses of crimes. Let's start with gun violence. For a short period there, the rest of the way out of problems. Um, now they're getting out of jail. Champaign Police Chief Anthony Cobb is talking about 2017 when both Champaign and Urbana saw the lowest number of shootings in the past five years. Now they're seeing more action from gang-like groups. Unfortunately, uh, they weren't gone forever and they come back and some of our numbers are going up. They're not all of our problem, but they are some of our problem. Uh, we still have way too many um, issues around guns in our community. That's why the Community Coalition created tactics like community canvassing and youth engagement programs. But work like that only gets so far without community cooperation. Uh, people who don't come forward and provide information it makes our jobs extremely difficult. When it comes to addressing crime, police don't just need help from the community to fill in the blanks. They need new officers to fill in vacancies. Our pool has gone down uh, tremendously, right? And I can't hire people who don't apply. Departments are painting a big help wanted sign, hoping to attract more applicants with the heart of what it means to be a police officer. You have to have a passion to help citizens. That's what, that's what we do every day we come to work, is to help our fellow citizen. That was Emily Braun reporting. The Champaign Police Department is changing its recruiting strategy. There are about a dozen openings. They used to only have a hiring period in January. Starting this year, there will also be one in June. A home surveillance camera caught a thief stealing a large trailer from a backyard. This happened in Danville, outside of a home on Oregon Avenue between Cannon and East Williams Street. The theft happened around 545 yesterday morning. The camera was too far away to get a clear image of the license plate or suspect, but it did show what kind of truck the suspect used. They pulled up to the back of the property, parked, hitched the trailer to the truck, and left all within five minutes. The family says they wouldn't press charges if whoever took it returns it. We work hard for what we have. We don't have a lot, you know, like everybody around here in the neighborhood. And we just want it back. And the police were great. They were out here, you know, as soon as we called them. And I just thank God we had the surveillance cameras so that we could see and get it out there. 
The family says they did not recognize the truck or the person in the video. If you know anything, contact Danville Police. It was a huge homecoming for one little boy. Why an entire community greeted him today. Plus, one housing authority is shutting down. Why a different one is taking over. And later, Illinois is trying to overcome a 15-game losing streak against Wisconsin. We'll have the highlights.